Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your host Jay here. This video is going to be all about entering Hyena State Park, the park where you will find the Nepali Coast hike, aka the Kalao Trail. Hyena State Park is on top of most visitors lists when visiting the island and I've been getting message upon message about this one so I figured I'd make a video to answer those questions all at the same time. But before doing that, just a reminder to be respectful of the land and the island and to please, please remember to take your trash out with you. It's a beautiful hike and a magical place and obviously we want to keep it that way. If you guys know me personally, you know that I'm a nature lover and cannot stand when people purposely litter outdoors. It like really drives me crazy. So now that I've got that PSA announcement out of the way, let's jump into the video and get to it. So here are the answers to the most common questions. Let's start off with, do you need a permit to enter? My most popular question. Let's start off with the majority of the people asking me this question, and that's not guests or people doing the full Kalao Trail, the 22 miles. So if you are just wanting to enter Hyena State Park, which includes KU Beach and hiking to Hanakapia Beach and waterfalls, then you'll only need one permit, also called a reservation, to enter if you don't have a Hawaii State ID. That goes for each and every person entering without a state ID. So say you, who doesn't have a Hawaii State ID, drive in with a group in their car and they have all a Hawaii State ID. You still need a permit since you don't have the Hawaii State ID. Each non-Hawaii State ID person must have a permit to enter, period. No ands, ifs, or buts. So please don't give the person at the entrance a hard time since they're just doing their job and they will turn you away if you don't have the permit. Now as for the other group, if you are doing the full Kalao Trail, the 22 miles, then you'll need to purchase a camping or overnight permit, whether you hold a Hawaii state ID or not. Your camping permit includes entrance to the park, so that's all taken care of. But if you have a car, you'll also need to purchase a parking for all the nights you plan on camping, unless you have a Hawaii state ID. It's all a little confusing, but all Hawaii residents can park for free. But no matter if you hold a Hawaii ID or not, you must pay for camping. My next questions are how to get there and what's the best way to get there. So you can either drive your own car, take the shuttle, walk on foot, or get dropped off. You can purchase all these permits and reservations you'd need no matter which way you enter at gohyena.com, link in the description. Uh, your best bet is to take the shuttle option, but let's break down these different options further. If you bring your own car, you must go to the website I just mentioned and put the date you'd like and press continue. Then you must pick the time you'd like to access the park. So there's the morning option, which is 6.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Afternoon, 12.30 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. Evening, 4.30 p.m. to sunset. If you'd like to park longer than one specific block of time, you must add those hours. If you stay past the designated hours that you have booked, then your car will be towed. For this option, it's 10 bucks for parking your car, which includes entry to the park, and it's five bucks for each additional passenger to enter. Also, these tickets sell out effing quickly and instantly, since there are only 70 spots available for non-residents. I don't know how many of you have ever stayed up till midnight or whatever to buy tickets on Ticketmaster for a concert you're dying to go and see. Well. This is like almost the same thing. Tickets are open 30 days out at midnight Hawaii time and you gotta be up around that time to book. But there is hope if you miss out and your day is sold out because these reservations can be canceled and they process cancellations daily between 5 and 6 a.m. and 5 and 6 p.m. Hawaii time. So if your day is not available, keep checking back between these hours because that day may become available again and maybe you'll get lucky. Next option is walking in on foot. Well, I guess you could bike in too, but you could park your car at Hyanna Beach Park, but A, this parking lot fills up super quickly too, since this is a popular tourist destination. So you risk 
not getting parking anyway, and B, you will have to walk probably a good 30 to 40 minutes to get to the trailhead. And if you're doing the eight mile waterfall hike, you wanna get there super early because you'll wanna be back before it gets dark on your way down. And then obviously you have to walk all the way back to your car after the hike. And well, let's just say you'll be tired for sure. It's a pretty intense hike. I can't imagine walking the additional 40 minutes after that long hike to get back to my car, but maybe you're more brave than I am. You still need a entrance permit and those will run you five bucks a pop. Those permits are good for the day so you don't have to pick a specific time slot, but these do also sell out quickly since they are the same tickets purchased for people arriving as a passenger in a vehicle or for people staying in the area that can just walk or bike over and enjoy the beach for the day. Next option is getting dropped off and picked up with like a taxi or Uber or something. There are companies too that provide this and I can provide you my go-to people if you're interested. Just shoot me a message via email, YouTube, or Instagram. The permit or reservation is the same obviously as walking in, but here's my hesitation with this option. You are in a black hole when you are at the park, meaning you do not have any cell service at all. So essentially you don't have the flexibility to finish the hike and give the person a call to come and pick you up when you're done. You need to have it all pre-planned and pre-arranged and you don't know how long you're gonna take to do the hike and maybe you just feel like chilling once you're done with the hike at K Beach or something, which I personally love to do myself. So I'd say that's my biggest hesitation with this, just the lack of flexibility once you're done with the hike. If you're done sooner than expected, then you'll just have to wait and if you're taking longer than expected then your driver may not be too happy either i guess the solution to this would be renting a satellite phone so there is hope if you'd really still like to have this as an option last option the shuttle is the option that will most likely get you into the park with the added bonus it helps the community because the fees help with community projects and jobs again you'd go to the website I mentioned earlier and click on the date you'd like. As you can see, there are several open, so much more obtainable. From there, you'd pick your departure hour and your seat for that departure time is reserved and guaranteed. Return trip from the park is first come first serve. The shuttle runs every 20 minutes back to the park and ride. You will drive your vehicle and depart on the shuttle from the Waipa Park and Ride. I'll put the link of the location on Google Maps in the description below so you know exactly where it's located. This reservation or ticket includes round trip shuttle ride, entrance to the park, and all day parking at the park and ride until 6.15 p.m. There is no overnight parking, guys, so don't get any ideas. These tickets will run you 35 bucks a pop. This is by far the best option in my opinion since you can stay at the park all day and especially if you're hiking to Hanakapia Falls, you'll need a few hours to do it. The chances of you getting a reservation to bring your car is slim already, but you would also need to reserve for sure at least two or three time slots to do the hike, which brings your chances even lower of getting that reservation. So. Trust me, the shuttle is definitely the way to go. My other biggest question is definitely luggage storage. So here's the deal. While Kauai is very safe, I mean, some locals call me crazy for saying that, but data doesn't lie. I mean, you should compare Kauai to my hometown, yikes. But while Kauai is very safe, there is crime on island. And a big one is car break-ins. Rental cars on island stick out like a sore thumb. It's true, I've hosted guests in the past that have gone to the beach or on a hike to come back and their windows are all smashed in. Will this happen while visiting Hyena for the day? Highly unlikely since there are so many people coming and going, but will it happen if you leave your car overnight and are hiking and camping the Kalau Trail? Possibly, definitely more likely, but I would say it's incredibly rare. I've never personally hosted anyone that has had their car broken into while they're out there camping for a few days, but still, some people don't feel comfortable leaving their luggage in the car. So what options do you have? One, there's a company called Elite Baggage, a great company, and you can store your first bag for 30 bucks and five bucks for each additional bag. Bulky items like surfboards or strollers are 10 bucks extra. 
then it's only five bucks for each additional day they store your stuff, which is pretty, pretty affordable. They also offer pickup and delivery services, which is awesome and convenient. I'll put a link to their website in the description below so you can see their website along with the drop off and pickup prices in case that's something you'd be interested in. Those prices depend on where you're staying on island. So check their website out and get all that info there. Another option is Kayak Kauai, also a great company. Luggage under 50 pounds is 12 bucks a day. Luggage above 50 pounds is 20 bucks a day. I'll also leave their website in the description below because they offer things also like uh, vehicle parking and pick up and drop off to the trailhead. Remember, still need a permit or a reservation to enter if you don't have a Hawaii State ID, but check out their website for those prices. And last option for luggage storage are hotels. So some hotels offer luggage storage, but you have to call around in advance to ask. If you plan on staying at a hotel before or after the hike, usually hotels are more willing to hang on to your stuff. And even some vacation rental owners will offer uh, luggage storage too. I know on Airbnb it will show on the listing if it's offered, but always reach out to a host and see if they offer it because I personally don't show luggage storage on my listing because I only do it when I'm home and not traveling and can offer it. So make sure you ask because you never know. All right, guys, I'm gonna end this here. Did I miss anything? Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. And I just wanna say it feels really good to be back making these videos again. I'm trying to play catch up to all the ideas I've had for videos since I took my long break. I have a backlog that feels like it will last me forever. But as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you guys tuning into my videos. So if you like this video, go ahead and click that like button. And if you want to see more videos of mine where I talk about hosting, Kauai, health, investing, finance, and all sorts of stuff going on in my life, go ahead and click that subscribe button. I'll see you next time.